What up everyone, my name is Storm. In today's video, we're going to be counting down everything you need to know when looping in Dead by Daylight. Hopefully this guide will cover everything from basic tips to help you to survive longer in Dead by Daylight. There's different structures that are featured throughout the map, which are known as jungle gyms. Each one is designed a bit differently, but before we talk about them, let's talk about movement first. Movement is the most important thing to talk about with planning every step. A lot of the beginning survivors will run around clueless, with where to go and how to counter a certain killer. Plan out your next move. When working on said generator, you will need to plan out your next step. What runs through my head whilst repairing a generator is where to loop, which pallets have already been destroyed, and is that area a dead zone? These are a few questions that I ask myself because you need to plan out your next step to know your surroundings and the tile because the wrong plan will end badly. But if you pick the right choice, then you can survive longer. We're wasting more time for the killer. Then your team will progress on the generators while being interrupted. Unless you leave the killer into the other survivors, which is a term called sandbagging. Don't worry, the more knowledge and play time, it will get easier. But it is always important to mind your surroundings. Just don't panic because it will get you killed. Tracking the killer. It's important to track where the killer is at all times because you don't want to get grabbed off the generator by passing you a jump scare. There are certain ways to track the killer. Keep checking behind you to see where the killer is. Most killers who are in this game will have a red stain, can pass you so much information for certain loops and mind gaming the killer. If you pay attention when the killer is hooking a survivor, you can see a glow outline to understand where the killer is. Certain perks such as alert can track the killer as well. When destroying a breakable wall, a generator or a pallet, the chase. When running from the killer is important to look behind you to see the distance that you have with the killer. And if you're not looking behind you, then the killer can change the pathing. When you thought the killer was right behind you, the killer can catch you off guard with passing you a jump scare. If you have troubles maintaining a good path whilst moving your camera around, practice this within the tutorial world or playing against some of your friends in a custom game. When being in chase, there's pallets are located around the map. And how can you use these effectively without your teammates yelling at you for dropping shark at 5 gens? Remember, the pallets are limited resources and the killers will have to break them, preventing you from using them again. So be careful when using them. If you got a good amount of distance against the killer, with having a feeling that you could do another loop around the structure with a pallet, remember to hug the structure as tightly as possible to make it harder for the killer to catch up. Also keep looking where the killer is at all times. That one mistake can catch you off guard and the killer can get a free hit on you or even down on you. Every map has good or bad loops, but it all depends on the RNG. Some loot you can trade together to save resources for later on in the game and to waste as much time as possible with the killer. If you're trading the loops together, then the killer most likely will leave you for another survivor because you're wasting too much time for them. So keep that in mind when you're playing as survivor. The main point when looping is to waste as much time as possible so your teammates can work on a generator safely. Be careful not to zone yourself with looping though. What I mean is that some killers will force you on the other side of the pallet or structure to force you to run with losing distance to get to the next loop. Also keep in mind that the killers can reach a vault and double back just at the right moment to catch you off guard. Sometimes the killer will double back thinking you're about to vault, passing you distance to vault or to run around the other way of the loop to continue the chase. If you lose a health state when losing a mind game, don't panic because you get granted a small speed boost to get to the next loop. Also, if you get hit near a pallet, don't throw the pallet. You'll lose distance and you're wasting a pallet. Just take the hit and continue looping to waste as much time as possible. The vault speed. When looping around windows, it all depends on the tile, what killer it is, and how the killer is playing. There's three different animations, slow vault, medium vault, and fast vault. The slow vaulting animation is your sneaky vault, without sending a notification to the killer if you're not holding down your sprint button, which keep in mind. If you throw a pallet, or sprint vault in through a window, it will alert the killer by passing them a audio and visual notification. Medium vaulting is if the survivor attempts to quickly climb through the window, but if they don't have enough momentum or do it in a certain angle, they will quickly but noisily climb over the window, but with the more of the body exposed, making it easier for the killer to hit them from a distance. On another note whilst we're here, some advanced survivors will force the medium vault to get grabbed by the killer whilst they're injured. For another survivor to come round the corner to get the flashlight save to let them get away. It's a very smart move. The fast forward is if you're holding down your sprint button and angling yourself straight towards the window with a few feet behind. And you will achieve the fast fault animation, which you want to achieve most of your chases. The basic comment tiles. 
Throughout the map, apart from random structures laid out, there's common tiles called jungle gyms, and each one is different. Let's showcase how to loop as a survivor on each tile. The Killer Shack. The Killer Shack spawns are located on every outdoor map, where it spawns a window and a god pallet, which is no counterplay, and you have to destroy the pallet. Also, there is slots you can see through on the bodied up windows to help you against the mind games. But be careful, some killers can shoot through them, but that's for another day. If you're going to run Shaq as a survivor, try to avoid throwing the Shaq pallet and try to save it for endgame. Or if you need to drop it to avoid death, then do it. The best way to loop the killer in the killer shark is by leading the killer through the doorway with lining your character towards the window for that fastball animation what we talked about. Be careful though, because the killer might mind game you by doubling back and catching you off guard at the window. If the killer forces you to loop the other way, just keep an eye on the red stain and attempt to fake the vault to run towards the doorway to continue the chase. Also, if you're coming the long way, the killer might jump through the window to put you off guard. But if you're fast enough, you can react in time. The long wall gym. The long wall jungle gym have a window on a fairly straight long wall, but it all depends on an anti-loop killers. You will run towards the window and keep looping clockwise, but the killer can fake it by going left towards the window. Then all of a sudden, they can fault the window with confusing the survivor and getting a free hit on them. If you're facing a huntress, then you need to keep hugging the corners towards the pallet and try to pay out the shot, then vault. It's all hit and miss and it all depends on the killer and how they're playing, so just be careful with this one. The short wall gym. Short wall jungle gyms have a window on a shorter side, an L-shaped wall. The window and the pallet are always opposite sides of the jungle gym. You kind of want to loop this the same way as the long wall gym, but you can have an easier time on this tile. When vaulting, you can fake it by going left if you don't want to use the pallet and continue either towards the window or the pallet. But it all depends if the killer wants to double back or continue chasing you. If the killer wants to anti-loop you by going anti-clockwise to force you to use the pallet or to slow vault the window to get that free hit, if you get hit when vaulting or towards the pallet, Try to run towards another loop and then use that tile later on. The pallet gym. The pallet gyms are quite simple to be honest. It has a short wall and it has a long wall, connecting with a pallet in between. Most of the time, the killer will get a free hit or mind gaming you to catch you off guard. It can be very challenging when a survivor drops the pallet, forcing the killer to break it. But this tile is a 50-50 and the killer will most likely catch you off guard. So just be careful. The T and the L walls. One of my favorite loops to be honest. But these tiles can be quite scary when you can chain them with other loops to make them even stronger. When looping this tile, you want to attempt to run these clockwise, and it can be a nightmare for certain killers to counter it, especially when you vault these windows until the entity blocks them. A smart killer will try and force you to go anti-clockwise, so it will take you onto the short end to get that free hit. But sometimes the killer can mind game when you've taken the short end by hiding the red stain and you could either jump into the killer's arms or fake it with going towards the other window and continue the loop. It's hit and miss I would say. If you get injured with this loop, try to plan out the next step by looking for another loop to go to to try and lose distance to waste even more time. These extra few seconds can help a teammate to finish off a generator. The Z walls. These walls are just a meme and most of the time you'll lose a health state. If you have nowhere to go, then you might be able to bait out some time by making the killer swing to get to the next loop safely. But like I said, you're most likely to lose a health state in this. But wasting a little bit more time can help. That's pretty much all the common tiles mentioned. But if you want a part 2 of running the map specific tiles, let me know in the comments below. The more you play Dead by Daylight, you pick up a few tips and tricks to help you learn these new tiles. Remember to use every chase as a learning curve with analyzing your gameplay to learn what you did good and bad when that chase. A very handy perk to help you with looping is Windows Opportunity from Kate Denson that shows the auras of pallets and windows. I would recommend using this perk when playing the game to understand certain loops and to know when pallets have been used already. It's a very handy perk and I still use it to this day. Hopefully this guide has helped you to become a better looper instead of urban raiding around the map when you hear a terror radius. Use these tips to improve yourself today to extend your chase. Thank you for watching this video and I really hope you did enjoy. Want to know more tips or hidden facts? Check out this video on screen where we count down 20 hidden facts that you may not know when playing survivor or killer. Also come join the discord server if you want to ask me any questions or find other people to play with. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Take it easy everyone and peace.